One other thing that I want to note that I think is kind of funny is that my alma mater actually offers a coding boot camp as well, but it has such bad reviews and it really goes to show that this trend of boot camp is really starting to catch on and starting to change the way that education looks in the field of computer science and STEM. Hello! And welcome to another video. I'm really excited to be filming for you guys today because I'm going to be talking about my experience applying to a coding boot camp. Ooh, what is a coding boot camp? It was surprising to me to realize that even a lot of engineers don't know what this recent trend is. So coding boot camps are basically like a training school to give you the tools that you would need to become a software engineer or a programmer of some sort. So in this video, I've broken down the process of applying to a coding bootcamp into four different parts. First, how I chose the bootcamp that I applied to. Second, the written application that I turned in. Third, the coding assessment that I took. And fourth, the Skype interview. And then, of course, after that, I tell you guys the verdict. So how did I choose a bootcamp that I applied to? Now, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty about all the different bootcamps out there and how I compare them, but basically, in researching the bootcamp that I eventually applied to, I looked at Quora, which is a site where you ask a bunch of questions, and I also looked at third-party websites like Course Report, and I even read people's blogs. And all in all, I came to the conclusion that the best bootcamp for me would be Full Stack Academy because they have a campus in Chicago, which is where I would prefer to move to. The other boot camps that I was considering was Grace Hopper Academy in New York and Coding Dojo, which is located here in Silicon Valley. So other reasons I chose Full Stack Academy was that it had a really good reputation, it had really high ratings on course report, there were blogs attesting to how great the program is, and they just seemed like a very authentic program where they really care about the students' learning and their success. And the last factor in choosing Full Stack Academy was the price. It was on the higher end of the price range that you'll see for boot camps. And the price point indicated to me that they stand by their word and they think that their education was really gonna be worth my investment. For some of these programs, I think what you get really is what you pay for. So that's why I decided that I would cash out a little bit more um, to ensure that I was getting the best education that I could possibly get. Okay. The application process. So for a lot of boot camps, you can actually apply right now cold turkey without any experience in programming and get in. But for some other boot camps like App Academy, Hackbright, um, I think Flatiron and Full Stack included, you can't just apply without having no knowledge of coding. These interviews will involve pair coding. So applying for Full Stack Academy, I actually had to plan a couple months in advance to actually teach myself the fundamentals of programming. And the language that I chose was JavaScript. JavaScript is the choice of many Full Stack programs. And so I created another video about how I taught myself to program in JavaScript and I'll put the link right there so you can watch that. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I spent about two months learning how to program in JavaScript before I actually felt ready to submit my application. So if you're interested in applying to a bootcamp, I highly, highly encourage you to look up which scholarships they have available because it's always changing and they always have some sort of funding because people want more software engineers. Companies are willing to fund these types of programs. So the application process was fairly simple. I chose which cohort I wanted to join, which is basically when I wanted to start the program. And then I also got to choose my second choice if that didn't work out. I had to put my LinkedIn URL, my GitHub URL, any other websites that I've worked on. And then I had to put in my undergraduate education, what my SAT or ACT score was. I also put in my AP scores that had to do with math or science in any way. And then I had to describe where I am in terms of learning how to program. And I said that I was making good progress. And some questions that I answered were, why would you be a good fit for a full stack? Why would you be a good student? What else should we know about you? Do you have feedback about our websites? And that's about it. It's a fairly straightforward process. There's no um, creative essays that you have to write or super philosophical things that you have to talk about. It's just you 
where are you at in life, why do you want to do this, and why do you think you will fit in with our program. Another thing that they ask you on the written application is what are your plans after graduating, and you have a couple options to choose from, like working as a developer, starting another company, or other. And I put down that I wanted to work as a developer, and that's specifically because I actually applied to the Grace Hopper track at Full Stack Academy. And Grace Hopper track is basically an extension of Grace Hopper Academy, which is in New York City, um, but it's in Chicago instead. So that means that my tuition is actually deferred until I find a job as a web developer or software engineer. If I decide to scrap the idea of becoming a programmer and like join a traveling circus, I basically have to fork up the entire tuition that was deferred during the program and, and I think pay it all at once versus paying it in monthly installments, which is what my agreement would have been if I worked as a developer. And I could talk more about the Grace Hopper program at the end of the video. Okay, so I wrote my application, I submitted it, and then within about, I think, two or three business days, they responded back to me and set up a time for a Skype interview. So for the coding assessment, I was super duper nervous about it. And so the coding assessment is definitely not something that you can just wing without any prior experience of coding. So if you lie on your application about how well you knew programming fundamentals, it would definitely show through the coding assessment. So the coding assessment gave me 75 minutes to answer six questions. I finished the first three questions in about 10 minutes. It took me the rest of the entire like 60 minutes to finish the last three because nerves got the best of me and I was like freaking out. I was able to answer all of them and have them all pass the unit tests Another thing about the interview process is that at no point did we talk about my GitHub portfolio or what projects that I've been working on. So it really shows that there's a heavy emphasis on your work ethic and your attitude and how easy you're able to work with others. So I'm sure you guys are wondering what the verdict is and I have to tell you guys that I got in. It was really funny. I finished the interview and I was like really high off of this adrenaline and a couple hours later I was perusing through my email and I see an email from Full Stack Academy. And I thought this email was just like a general email that they would send out to you after an interview because it was only a couple hours after I got off the Skype call. Um, but little did I know, it was actually an acceptance letter <laughs> just hours after the interview. So I was like completely shocked at how quickly they they came to a decision. So if you decide to go to these boot camps, make sure that you have the financial resources and the time to do it because it's going to be an intense period of your life. And like I said, I was accepted into the Grace Hopper track, which is a deferred tuition program specifically for women to get more women into computer science. And because I have this amazing opportunity to attend a coding bootcamp without paying for this huge upfront tuition cost, there are a couple extra rules that I have to follow and some agreements that I have to sign, extra things I'm held liable to in order for me not to pay that upfront tuition. I'm thinking about making another video talking specifically about deferred tuition programs because I think they're super important and a great way to bridge the gender disparity within computer science. So let me know if you're interested in that video and like this video if you enjoyed watching it and found it informative and subscribe if you like to see more videos from us. We have a lot of video ideas coming up. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye!